If we could say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stay standing for a moment of silence for our recently departed members, their families and friends, and also for any of the sick and infirmed. Please have a moment of silence. Be seated. Thank you very much and welcome back. Um, we will be closing the pot of gold uh, as soon as our guest speaker, Chief Coppinger, comes up. So that way we'll, there won't be any distractions for his very important message. Um, this is actual, we may as well open this up to nominations. There are six officers and five executive board members, all who are up for nomination. Do we have any new nominations that are being cast? Any new nominations? Any new nominations? I believe we have nobody stepping down, which is a good sign. But if anyone, even if you don't want to be nominated formally to a position, if you'd like to help, please contact any one of us. Could we have a single vote cast for all of the uh, people who are up for election? We have a second? All those in favor? All right, thank you very much. Okay, uh, let me introduce the guests, people who will be here to speak. There will be Jillian from Abacus. There will be Lauren from Harvard Community. And then to be followed up by Chief Coppinger. Uh, before I have Jillian and Lawrence come up, I'd like to preface this where I'm sure that all of you have gotten a letter in the mail indicating that your health insurance has gone up. Well, first of all, before we start that, we did vote. Buzzy was instrumental in that vote. Uh, we did vote for the maximum COLA. So you'll be getting a 3% raise on the $14,000 floor. So you'll be getting a $420 raise. That should be enough, believe it or not, to cover virtually all of your increased health insurance. So didn't like to say that the health insurance is going up, but claims are up. And also, one of the things you have to realize is when any new medication comes out that is helping people, they're living longer, it's helping them in a very good way, and one of those drugs that's very expensive that has just come out, has been recognized, you've probably seen it on TV, is the drug which is actually a cure for hepatitis C. That is a very expensive treatment process that goes involved with that, and that's one of the reasons why the claims have gone up so much. So I will preface these two speakers coming up next on healthcare with, please use the benefits provided. The more you use the benefits, the more under control it's helping us keep the cost down in healthcare. So whether it's by using the, uh, the programs that Jillian has in place, or you're gonna hear a whole new uh, valuable set of directives being given by Lauren with Harvard that's coming up that should help everybody as far as awareness, health, and cost savings for the city. So if you wouldn't mind, why don't we have uh, Jillian from Abacus come up first, and she'll give you a little heads up. Thank you, Rich. Good afternoon, everyone. So many of you um, probably recognize me, and you know that I work for Abacus, and we administer two great money-saving programs for you through your benefits for the city of Lynn. The first one is called the Good Health Gateway Diabetes Program. Can I have a show of hands of how many have heard of that program? Okay, good amount of you. So the diabetes program is a great benefit for those who have diabetes or prediabetes. It helps you get your diabetes medications and your supplies for zero copay. And all that we ask is that you visit your doctor and you have your labs and exams done uh, for your diabetes care management. Um, once you have those dates submitted to us on the form that's part of the program, we give you a copay waiver card to use at your local pharmacy. 
that you can get your medications and your supplies for zero copay. And this includes test strips, glucometers, lancets, um, any type of pill form like metformin, um, insulins, all types of things that are covered through your formulary for having your um, health insurance through City of Lynn. So it's a great benefit to take advantage of if you can. If you have any questions about the diabetes program, you can come see me afterwards. The uh, other program that we have is My Medication Advisor. Uh, you might also know this as Canna RX or the Canadian uh, Drug Buying Program. This program is a based on a medication list that there are all different types of brand name maintenance medications. So your long-term type of medications, whether it's for cholesterol, blood pressure, um, allergy medications, things like that. Uh, they are not all, um, all medications are not all on this list. It's only a certain subset of them that are uh, gonna help you save money and help the city of Lynn save money. So there are some additions, and I have a bunch of the new medication lists that just came out for the May 1st quarter. And there are some new ones. Uh, some of them are actually specialty meds that are on there now. So you might want to take a look and see if there's anything that you haven't seen on there before. How you participate in that program is you can come see me. I have the form that you need that you would bring to the doctor. You would ask for a script for three months, three refills for whichever medication is on this list. And it would come through mail order. So it would be just like a mail order program, but it's coming internationally, it's coming from Canada, and it's shipping right to your house. So it's completely free and it's completely voluntary. Both of these programs, be that be a minister, minister, are to help you save money. So if you can take advantage of them, I would ask you to come see me um, after all of the speakers, and I can give you some more information. Okay? Thank you very much. To reinforce what Jillian is saying, I have, um, let me see, five clients of mine are pharmacists, and I actually presented that list to them to see what their take was. Like, are these good drugs? Not that are they good drugs, meaning are they expensive drugs? So in other words, you're not getting some generic that costs pennies for free. You are really getting some high quality, very expensive medications for free. So it's not like you're getting something as questionable. So now, young lady, if we could have Lauren up here, who's our Harvard representative, who's going to wow you with some very good information, also bringing, let's just say, you and the city of Lynn closer and closer to technology. So thank you, Lauren. Okay. Thanks, Rich. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me OK? OK. So as always, thanks for having me here. Um, Harvard Pilgrim, you know, year after year, is, is always very happy and excited to partner with the city of Lynn um, to provide you with your health insurance for the active employees and for the retirees. Um, so as you know, Rich mentioned, July 1st is your anniversary date. Um, so premiums may be changing, but good news, no change in your coverage. So benefits that you have now are staying exactly the same. Um, so you don't have to worry about anything like that. And we have some great new programs that are being incorporated into your current benefits that we wanted to tell you about. So you'll see I put a few things out on the tables for you. Um, the first kind of looks like a web page. And, so, and that is because Harvard Pilgrim has created a website for the city of Lynn off of our, you know, our homepage. So the web address is www dot harvardpilgrim.org slash city of Lynn. So on this page, it's going to give you access to all of your information, your schedule of benefits, benefit handbooks, prescription drugs, any wellness information, um, tools and resources that you might need, just another way that things are right at your fingertips. Uh, you can also create an account 
through HBHC Connect. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to view your claims. If you have questions, you wanna contact member services, you don't feel like calling, you can send them a message. Um, you can view prescription drugs, doctor visits. There's all sorts of cool stuff we can go on, you know, that you can find on there. Um, but this is specifically dedicated to the city. So all of your benefits and your information will be right there at your fingertips. And it's just another tool, you know, to make sure you guys have access to everything you need 24-7. Um, so the second piece that you may see there is the City of Lynn Employee Wellness Day. Uh, Harvard Pilgrim is very proud to sponsor this wellness day with the city. It's gonna be next Thursday, June 23rd in City Hall, room 107, and we'll be providing chair massages, sun damage screening testing, blood pressure screenings. We're gonna have a nice nutrition information station um, with the nutritionists go over food labels, recipes, you know, fun things like that. I will also be there. So, you know, as always, you can always ask me questions here today in the back, um, but I will be there if you have any questions for me as well on your benefits. Um, but I think this is, this is something that's fun. It's nice if you, you know, have nothing to do, please come out and see us and, you know, maybe get a free massage, so. So then the final piece you'll see here, it's called Doctors On Demand. Uh, this is a new program that is starting on July 1st. And I do need to say that this program is only available for those members on the HMO or the PPO plan. It is not available for members on the Medicare Enhanced Plan because Medicare does not cover this type of service. So this type of service, it's called telemedicine. So what that is, is it's virtual visits with a doctor or a physician. So there's an app and you download the app and pretty much you're gonna put in your information, all of this, and if you have kind of you know, a low you know, common problem, you can essentially Skype with a, with a board certified physician. So you might think that you have a cold or strep throat or something like that. And, and really getting to the doctor, getting to Minute Clinic, something like that is kind of a hassle for you rather than letting it go on and maybe the symptom get worse and then eventually you need to go into the emergency room. You now have a tool at your fingertips you can use on a smartphone, tablet, your computer, and you can be face-to-face, real-time with the physician. Um, the hours are from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., so it's opening up you know, a whole time frame for convenience of care for you. Um, it is $20, so that's just the same as your office visit copayment. So when you sign up, you'd kind of put all of your information in there. Uh, these doctors, like I said, board certified physicians, so you know, um, you're, you're seeing you know, a real MD over the, over the phone, over your, your smart device. Um, and the good part is it's a low cost to the city too, which helps reduce the claims, you know, the overall claims. Um, it, this is available anywhere you are. So if you're on vacation, you're out on a boat, you're, you know, in Idaho, I mean, any place you can log right on and you can, you know, talk face to face with a physician. So like I said, just kind of common, the cold, flu, um, strep throat, maybe a rash or a cut. And the great thing is these providers, they can also write prescriptions for you. So, you know, if you need a Z pack, you know, they can say, okay, this is what you need. We'll call it into your local pharmacy for you. You put in your pharmacy information, or again, if you're traveling, they'll call it into the nearest one there. Uh, they will provide you with detailed notes on your visit, and if requested, they can send that directly to your PCP for you. Um, they could also just say to you, get yourself to the emergency room. This is way more than we can handle, you know, face to face and, or through the phone. And another thing coming soon, probably in the next couple months, they're still working it out, but you'll be able to do behavioral health visits, um, you know, over through the Skype, through the uh, telemedicine app. So we think it's going to be great. You know, it's just another thing there for you, another way for you to access care um, conveniently. Um, 
So hopefully, you know, that's like I said, July 1st, and it's only for the members on the HMO or the PPO. If you're on the Medicare Enhance, unfortunately, Medicare does not recognize telemedicine as a covered service yet, yet. So hopefully that will change one day. Um, but I think it's a pretty cool, a pretty cool feature, um, you know, if you're into technology. So, um, and if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And as always, I'll be in the back um, if you have personal questions that you want to ask. Um, but does anyone have any questions on any of this new stuff? Yeah. So are you on the Medicare Enhanced Plan? Uh, do you have Medicare? Yes. So we only cover Medicare covered services. So we do have through our member savings program, we have a savings program called Universal Dental. Um, it is not insurance. It's, it has nothing to do with the insurance. It's a savings program that there is a network of providers that offer discounts to Harvard Pilgrim members. Um, but there is no you know, dental, dental insurance or dental coverage. Well, thank you very much. A couple of questions or comments to the audience. For those of you, I saw some people writing. If you're looking at the handout that says the website, in the upper right-hand corner right up here, it says that's the actual website. That's the address you'll go to. Right there, if you look, it says www.harvardpilgrim.org slash city of Lynn. So that's the actual website you'll go to. Now, I do have a question for you, Lauren. Um, you said that when you go to the website, you can look up your records, et cetera. If you use that um, doc in the box, doc on demand, is that referenced and uploaded to your? Um, the notes from the doctor yes. won't be there, but any visits that you have will, will connect, yes. OK, because so, I, I assume that um, all of you have had occasion to when you were really feeling down and out, not be able to get up and get out to go to either a clinic out of the hospital and would have really liked to have had an option or an opportunity like that. How many of you in this room, please, uh, for Lauren's edification, could I see a raise of hands? Everybody who has options to get to either a computer or a smart device of any sort? Or has an email address? Okay, so we're looking at the, the bulk of people here. Very, very important because one of the things that if you don't have that option now, um, how many of you all, do? does everyone here have a cell phone? Okay. If you do have an option, please you know, upgrade your cell phone to a smartphone. Please do that because with the smartphone, you will now have the ability in general for the most part to have access to a, a website to use, whether it's an Apple, to use Safari, or to just get on the website to be able to reference these from your cell phone wherever you are. So that's very, very important. It's for, important for sending and receiving emails, et cetera. So we'll bring you, one way or another, we'll see if we can bring you into technology or technology into you. So uh, now why don't we close the uh, pot of gold, Marty? OK, so we're all set. So now, if we could have our guest speaker up here, Chief Coppinger, to tell you all kinds of good stuff to stay away from. I think that's an easier way of saying it. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone, for having me here. It's a pleasure. Rich, thank you for the invite. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to touch base on two topics uh, quickly. Uh, the first one being scams. There's a number of scams that are being uh, out and about in society today. Most of them are aimed at the seniors. And then I was going to talk a little bit about the opiate epidemic that's all over the place, particularly here in New England. And it goes across all, all borders. Um, and I'll give you a few tips on what to do there and some suggestions. And then I just might open it up to questions if there's anything on your mind that you want to talk about, you know, for the city, for police, public safety, um, you know, we can have that conversation. So going back to the scams, the, the one big one now that seems to be um, more prevalent is the Internal Revenue Service scam that you'll receive a phone call at home from an individual <coughs> alleging that they're, they're from the Internal Revenue Service, and they may tell you that you're behind in a payment, you owe back taxes, some other story like that. They can be very intimidating. 
They can threaten lawsuits. They can threaten to, to uh, uh, tap into your bank accounts, into your pension checks, if you don't take immediate action. And the immediate action that they generally want is for you to wire money to you know, some address that they'll give you, which is gonna go into somebody's pocket. It's not the Internal Revenue Service. And if you do that, you're gonna be scammed. When I talk about scams in general, just think of, think of it this way, first of all, in, in two phases. Number one, common sense. If it doesn't sound right, don't commit. Ask questions. Delay. If it's, somebody's on the phone with you and they're pressuring you, just say, could I have your name and your phone number? I want to check with my friend or my son or my daughter. I'll call you back in an hour. Or I'll call you back tomorrow. Do that immediately. Never jump into any of these things. And the other piece of advice on scams, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. You guys and ladies already know that. that that's huge. Um, this IRS one, they've gotten over 250,000 victims over the last couple of years. And I don't have a dollar amount on that, but I can, rest, I can assure you it, it wasn't cheap. And we all know how tight a dollar can be in today's society with you know, the, the cost of goods and services, so everybody needs every dollar that they have. And with the IRS, if you ask them, and I have had conversations with some of the IRS investigators, they will never call you. They will send you something in the mail. You know, we all get them on occasion around tax season, those little white envelopes with the black ink up on the corner says IRS, so our hearts all flutter a little bit because we think we're getting audited. Um, if you, so if you see that, then you need to think about it you know, and, and pay attention to it. But once again, I would still suggest speak to a loved one, speak to whoever does your taxes, you have an attorney, somebody that you, you have faith in, bring it up. Never make a quick decision. Moving on, identity theft is huge today for all generations. And it's something that is uh, it's costing millions and millions of dollars. If anybody uses the ATM machines that are prevalent all over the place, they now some of the, the clever folks put in a small device, if you know the ATM machines where you put your debit card in, they'll put a device in there that you won't even know it's there, so you slide your debit card in, it reads all your information, and then there'll be a small pin camera that'll be watching as you punch in your, your uh, access code so you can enable your funds. They see that and you'll take out a whatever, however much money you want out of your ATM account, get back in your car, before you get to your next destination, you probably, your account's probably been cleaned out. They watch those remotely. It's very lucrative for them. That's why if you go into some of the banks now, you'll see these little rubber, like uh, pieces of, uh, well, pieces of rubber that hang over the keypad. That's to block the cameras from seeing your fingers. I would also suggest, if you can, take a piece of paper or your pocketbook or something, just put it up a little higher so they can't see. Imagine the camera's up top. You don't want to give your PIN number out to anybody. Again, identity theft, they get that, you're in big trouble. Another very popular scam, particularly around this time of year, is the grandchild or the great-grandchild scam. Some of these fraudulent people will call you they can get your name, it's all public record, phone number's a public record for the most part, and you may get a phone call saying, Grandma, do you know who this is? And you may not be sure, but most people will say, oh, that's Johnny, how are you? Now the scammer knows you've got a grandson named John, Johnny or Mary or whatever it is, and next thing they're gonna say is, listen, I'm down in spring break, I'm in Cancun or Cozumel, Mexico, I went out last night, had a few too many beers with, with my friends, and I've been arrested. I can't get out of jail until you go down to Western Union and wire the money to such and such of address, and they'll let me go. It's amazing the amount of people that will do that. Please, again, don't do that. All right, make sure you know who you're talking to. If they're in jail, find out the information. Ask for a callback number. Ask to speak to somebody in charge or whoever the police officer is, or whoever's detaining them. And if you, they won't put anybody on the phone, it's a pretty good suggestion you've been scammed. And if they do, get a phone number. If you do speak to somebody, get a phone number that you can return the call. Again, call a loved one, a son or daughter, friend, lawyer, whatever. Get that information clarified, and then hopefully you'll, you'll realize it's a scam and your grandson or granddaughter is probably home, sleeping in bed, playing PlayStation or Xbox, and having a great time for themselves. 
Couple other things, you've talked a little bit about healthcare here and, and prescription medications. Again, be careful if you get solicited to buy your, your, your medications over the internet. Uh, as the first speaker said, there are, there are good legitimate companies, but there are also a number of companies that will take your information, take your credit card information, sell it to you at below market rates, and you, you may get something back in the mail. It may just be a placebo, it'll be nothing, a sugar pill, or you may get nothing in return at all. You're just giving me money, they'll say the package will be arrived in four to five days or whatever it is and nothing will show up. Be careful, please, like I said, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So don't get, get caught up. And the last scam I'll talk about quickly is tech support. I saw a number of hands go up with that folks have computers at home. Um, every day they get more and more and more sophisticated I've got two boys at home in their early 20s, and I've got to go to them a lot of times just to figure out some of the stuff. But every once in a while, you may get an email, or some little thing will pop up on your screen saying, you know, your, your uh, memory is, is, is filled, or uh, you have a virus on your system, you know, and then you can, you can live chat to them, type on the keyboard and engage in conversation with them. And if that happens, I'll guarantee, and they may say they're even from Microsoft, or Apple, or one of the major companies. But as you're going back and forth talking, then you're gonna say, well, we can remotely log into your computer for a fee of so many hundreds of dollars and we'll clean up the viruses on your computer. Again, I suggest get the information. Get a phone number where you can call and talk to a live person. Do not allow them to do that and certainly do not give them your credit card information. That's the kiss of death with, with the money, okay? And moving on to the opiates. This epidemic has been going on for a number of years, and it's, it's everywhere. Obviously, Lynn, we, we have a number of overdoses last year. 50 people died of a heroin overdose in Lynn. 50. Four or five years ago, we were averaging about eight, eight or nine deaths a year. It's widespread, out of control, and I'm gonna say honestly and truly, it's not just the cities like Lynn you know, Boston's, the Lowell's, the Lawrence's, it's everywhere. It's in the affluent communities, it's in the poorer communities. It's something that we, society does not have a good read on. We're trying to stop it, but the epidemic just keeps getting worse and worse. When I go to meetings like this, and, I'm, and please, I'm not asking anybody to raise your hand, but I say you know, like a rhetorical question, if I ask you to raise your hand, I bet you almost everybody in this room will acknowledge that they know somebody either in their immediate family or a close friend that has a substance abuse problem, whether alcohol or, or drugs. And it happens all the time. And it's, as I said before, it's growing and growing and we need to stop it. One of, in one of the issues that, that's out there today, and Governor Baker actually earlier this year came out with a new law restricting the amount of medications that some folks can get but like the Oxy, Oxycontins and Oxycodone pills are really, they're wonderful painkillers if that's what you need. But if you don't need them, my advice, and I'm certainly not a doctor, I'm a cop, don't use them, don't take them. And I'll just give you a quick example, and I'm not picking on all the doctors, I gotta be very careful standing up here because doctors good, do good things. But a quick story, one of our police officers got injured several months ago, uh, he broke his hand during an arrest. He went up to the hospital, talked to the doctor, wanted, um, you know, they had to bandage, you know, splint the hand up, all that, and the doctor gave him prescriptions, I think they were for Vicodins. And the officer said, doctor, I don't want that. Doctor's response was, that's the strongest medication I can give you. The officer was looking for something lower, like an over-the-counter pain med. He didn't want to take the, uh, the Vicodins because it, it can lead to addiction if you don't do it right. So there are some doctors out there that will over-prescribe, and I know that's been a big thing they're trying to deal with at the State House, as I mentioned, Governor Baker has, has taken some action with there. Um, but there's all kinds of this, like I said, Oxycontins, Oxycodins, Percocets, Vicodins, there's a whole family of drugs that any of us may get for any type of injury we, we may sustain. And if you gotta take them, take them. Take them under a doctor's care. But one thing to be leery of when you're done taking them and you put them in your medicine cabinet, most of us will begin to forget about them. And if you've got grandchildren or neighbors or friends come over with their kids, 
Sometimes they, they, when they go to use the bathroom, they like to open up the medicine cabinet. And if they see a bottle of Oxycontins out there, in there, they may take them. They may take them to try them. They may take them to sell them. 40 milligram pill of Oxycontin on the street is $40. 80 milligram, $80. One bag of heroin, $5. Do the math. We don't have to be economics majors here. Very profitable to sell the heroin. A lot of folks get hooked on Oxycontins, and when they get hooked so bad, they can't afford it, they drop down and they buy the heroin on the street. Problem with heroin today, and the reason why we have this big epidemic and the number of overdoses that people are dying is a drug called fentanyl. Fentanyl is a synthetic man-made drug that's another very, very good painkiller. But a little tiny speck of fentanyl can kill you if you get it on your skin, if it's not absorbed right. There are fentanyl patches you can get from medical personnel that can help you with, again, pain. But now they mix it with the heroin, they sell it on the street. For them, it's a little cheaper, but the, the going rate for, for what you're buying stays the same. And for, for a heroin addict, if they take more than their usual dose, they overdose and they die. We have, does everybody know what Narcan is? Naloxone is the, the, the official medical uh, uh, pharmacy name of it, but it's more commonly called Narcan. Narcan is a wonder drug. All our police officers carry it in the cruisers. The Lynn Fire Department carries it. The, uh, the ambulance folks, EMS carry it. It's an amazing drug. I've seen it myself work many times. You go to a location where you see an overdose, Someone is on the ground, unconscious, unresponsive, and really they're dead. And we walk in with the, the OxyContin, the, the emergency medical service providers, and it's a nasal spray. Just like Afrin was very popular many, many years ago. You spray it up your nostrils and you, get rid of the, you clear your head. Spray it up, one, one, uh, one vial in each nostril, they come back from, back from the dead like that. Problem with overdose victims and heroin victims, they come up and they're madder than hell because we just ruined their high, they need to go find another purchase of heroin to get that high back. That's how bad these addictions are. Some good news, if there's any good news with this, with this epidemic is, again, when I said a few minutes ago, if you know somebody, we do have resources. One thing the city of Lynn has done over the last several years, and really over the last couple of years, we've really brought it to a new, new level is collaborations and partnerships with all kinds of agencies here. Folks, speaking as a cop, I probably wouldn't have talked to 20 years ago because I would have thought they would have been out enabling people to do drugs. But with realists now, we're, we're really looking at the problem to save lives. So we have a behavioral health unit here at the police department. We hired uh, two civilian clinicians, trained clinicians, not, not law enforcement, trained clinicians in substance abuse and mental health. Mental health is just as prevalent on our streets today, and a lot of folks with substance abuse issues also have mental health issues. We also have another 16-hour-a-week clinician, uh, excuse me, a caseworker who helps out with mental health, jail diversion. So if you know anybody that has a, an addiction and they want help, just they, they can come into the police station, they can call. They work Monday through Friday, the regular business day, just ask for the behavioral health unit, and one of those individuals will talk to you and they have resources where they can hopefully get you into a program. It is very, very difficult to get a bed, a detox bed on demand. There's not, meant, not enough beds for the amount of activity that are out there, but we're trying. Again, I know that the state legislature is trying to do better on that. The Mass Department of Public Health is trying to do better on that. It really needs to happen, but we, at least we're making strides. Our behavioral health unit will, tries to follow up on all our overdoses so, so we can stop it before it starts again. And I'm almost finished with this, I'll open up some questions, but I just want to leave you with this one story. Last fall, a gentleman overdosed up in East Lynn, in the home of his mother. And she saw it, she witnessed it, he's on the floor, as I described before, unconscious, um, unresponsive, for all intents and purposes, dead. Mother had Narcan. She went out and got the Narcan, she saved her son's life. Tremendous. I applaud her. She did not dial 911, she did not report it. Two weeks later, 
The exact same thing happened, but the mother did not get a chance to go back and get her Narcan supply re re replenished. The son died in her arms. As much as this is, you know, obviously drugs are illegal, there is the Good Samaritan law that if somebody is, is overdosed and they can dial 911, police, fire, and emergency medical services will come. And the law says they cannot be charged for possession offenses. The intent here is to save lives. So again, if you know anybody, or spread the word with your family. If somebody looks like they're dying, please dial 911. We want to save the lives. We want to save the lives. Worry about all the other stuff afterwards. Hopefully we can get them into treatment, but we don't want people dying. At that point, um, can I answer any questions on any topic at all that you want to talk about with uh, about the police department or the city? Uh, I realize that, uh, that uh, Narcan doesn't work on fentanyl. I read it in the paper. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I agree with you on that. I, I've been to a lot of trainings on this one. Narcan attaches to the receptors in your brain that the, that the, the opiates block, and that's when you die. Narcan's supposed to cleanse them. Now, maybe straight fentanyl, I, I, I can't be sure, but I know a lot of our heroin that's in society today, even around in Lynn, is mixed, and I've seen it work with Narcan. It does come back. Yeah, it, it yeah, could be, but any other questions on anything? Counselor? Maybe if uh, somebody wanted to get Narcan, where would they go to get it for their house? Great question. You can get Narcan. Um, Actually, if you want to call the Behavioral Health Unit, I mentioned before, just call the main number for the police station. They'll put you in touch with it. But there is an there is a organization downtown called Healthy Streets. It's a young lady named Mary Wheeler. Um, I know their office was on Union Street. I think they may have moved it. But uh, Mary's, Mary's around all, all over. Um, now, can anybody can get it. They'll give you about a 15-minute training. They says it's very easy. They'll just teach you how to... How to um, Analyze a patient, make sure they need it, and they'll just show you how to, it's very easy. You just take the plastic vials of, of the Narcan, and you have a dispenser. You plug it in the dispenser, up one no, a nostril, little plunger, up you push the plunger, and you administer it. It's, it's very, very easy. Get it, and you can put it in your homes. I know, actually, uh, Council Barton just mentioned the city council, the entire city council was trained there a couple of, maybe a month or six weeks ago, that, that they know how to do it. Um, it is a wonder drug. It is something that we need everywhere. Um, and we're trying to get it out as much as possible. So. If I'm not mistaken, uh, isn't it impossible to sort of, as they say, screw up by giving Narcan? Like there's no such thing as overdosing, so if you were afraid of giving it, I do not think there's a problem with that. Am I correct? That, that's 100% correct. If you didn't hear them, you can give Narcan to anybody, and if they're not on an opiate high, they're not on the, the Oxycontins or the heroin, um, it, it won't affect them. That's the beauty about Narcan. You don't have to be a doctor or a nurse to figure out if it needs to be administered. If you think it needs to be, you can do it. If somebody administered me Narcan right now, it wouldn't affect me. I'm not on heroin. I'm not on opiates. So those receptors in my brain that I mentioned before that the heroin locks onto to give you the high, I don't have that. So it won't hurt you at all. And that's why it's, it's so good and so easy and so readily available to save lives. Any other questions? What's the gang situation like going on now and then? Um, actually, that's, that's, that's a great topic. I'd love to talk about that one. So the question was, what is the gang situation like here in Lynn today? 2010 was our worst year. Back then, we had 35 identified gangs. We had about 1,400 gang members. Uh, we call them the, the hardcore gang bangers that you would think that are out there with weapons, guns, shooting at each other beating people up, robbing people. Uh, so the 1,400 were a combination of the, the hardcore gangbangers and what we call the wannabes, people who want to aspire to be a full gang member. They're just trying to get up, to go up the, the ladder to, to, to get to that, that level. Back then, uh, we were having shootings almost every weekend. And I say this tongue in cheek, but thank God the gang members couldn't shoot straight because we would have been tripping over bodies throughout the city. At that time, uh, we, well, we still have it now. We have a partnership with the FBI and the Massachusetts State Police and a, and a few other municipal police agencies. We're part of a Hyder Gang Task Force, which is designated by the federal government. Um, they're in the city. Well, one thing we, 
we're good about it when you deal with the feds. They bring lots of money and lots of toys technology-wise. And, and we, we did this 18-month investigation back then. At the end of the day, we locked up 65 of these hardcore gangbangers. We brought in over 50 heavy weapons off the streets. And I've never saw it before, but a 50 caliber handgun. You know, it took me two hands just to, just, just to lift the thing. It was so big. And, and this is what these kids have. That was our worst year. Since then, in partnership with the Lynn Public Schools, who I've got to say have done an excellent job with teacher trainings combined with us, District Attorney John Blodgett's office, U.S. Attorney Carmen Ortiz's office, we've done a lot there. Today, we estimate maybe about 300 gangs and maybe about 10, I'm sorry, 300 members, gang members, down from 1,400 down to about 300, maybe 350, down from 35 gangs to maybe under 10. It's quiet, knock on wood. You know, so that's, uh, that's helped us quite a bit. And, and we stay on top of it as much as we can. It's, we try to take the, 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 uh, the culture, the luxury of, of gang uh, violence and gang um, affiliation out of it. And one of the things we, we do when we, when we go out and speak, it's when you get arrested on a federal case like we did in 2010, and you go away, you're not going up to Middleton, to the local jail, or you're you going someplace in Massachusetts. You're going out to, to uh, Minnesota, you're going out to Texas. The feds send you elsewhere in the country so your buddies can't come visit you, your girlfriends or your boyfriends can't come see you. So when you do your 15, 20 year sentence and you come back, you're nobody because they don't remember you anymore. That's a huge thing for, the, for, for prosecution purposes to get them out of their environment. Any other questions at all? You're talking about drugs and, and gangs and all that kind of stuff. I have a real problem on the 4th of July with people all over the city putting off, shooting off fireworks. Is there anything that's ever going to be done about that? I'm going to give you an honest answer. It's extremely difficult and probably not. You're all Lynn retirees, so you, you know what the city of Lynn is like over the 4th of July weekend. It's incredible. We go call to call to call. They back the calls up. Block parties everywhere. Fireworks everywhere. On an average night, we, we, we put out six one-man cars and four two-man cars. Okay, 14 police officers on the street, three sergeants on top of that. So we have 17 cops for a city of 92,000. If we responded to one block party on the 4th of July to break up the, the fireworks, chances are we're going to need at least half of those cars, if not more. We don't have the bodies. Because usually when you go to block parties and, and the fireworks are going off, it's late at night, they've been drinking there, having their cocktails, and they, they don't want us to come in and stop. And you can just keep going and going and going, and it's the domino effect. It's horrible. I agree with you. I completely agree with you. And I get, my phone will start ringing now until July 3rd at work. You know, folks asking us to do just what you're doing. And then starting July 5th, they're calling at and screaming at me because we didn't do what, what we're paid to do. And I just say, even if I had 1,000 cops, you would still hear fireworks. I hate to say it, but it's a reality. And you know, with fireworks illegal in, in neighboring states, they're so easy to get. You know, we confiscate a lot of them, but it's just it's an incredible the amount of uh, activity out there, and it's just we just don't have the resources for it. So, any other questions? Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Chief. Uh, very very informative. But uh, let me. Um, just to reiterate some of what the, the chief said, especially with a lot of you possible grandparents having grandkids coming walking around your house, be very, very aware of what the chief said. Your medicine cabinet can be evil. I don't even care if you put the stuff up on the top shelf so no one can see it or if you try to hide something. Little kids are very curious and they get into everything all the time, every time. And you know, as they say, experimentation, and you know, curiosity killed the cat, well, don't let it kill your grandkid. And I know that sounds like a, a crazy euphemism, but they're going to try anything because it's enticing. The other thing is that if and when you do get your smartphone or your computer or whatever, as the chief was saying, the longer they keep you on the line, and don't start just opening up emails. There's this thing called malware, which can go in there and affect your system. And that's when they'll call you up and they'll say, hey, unless you give us 100 bucks right here or 1,000 bucks, we're not going to unlock your system and let it be used. So there's all kinds of scams out there. And you're of the generation, as I mentioned before, being too damn polite. 
If you get somebody on the phone and you don't know who they are, hang up. Otherwise, they're going to hook you in, they're going to reel you in, and they're going to give you some sob story. Hang up. The other thing is with the IRS. Even if you do get the letter that says the IRS, and by the way, you will never have an IRS agent call you. Never. Never, ever, ever. That will not happen. That's not in their job description. But even if you get some little letter which says IRS, it looks very official, do yourself a favor. Drop a dime to the number just to make sure it really is the IRS, because sometimes it's not. And they're very creative with, it. hey, it looked like a, a, the right logo and everything else. They're very creative like that. The other thing is that how many of you people in this room right now, I said this before, know what your credit score is? Please raise your hand. How many of you people have pulled your credit report in the last year? I just finished teaching a course up at Merrimack College. And I had every one of them pull a credit report. Some of them who didn't even have credit had stuff on their credit report. And don't think that just because you've got a great credit score, that's, that's all there is. If you have an 850, which is a perfect credit score, it doesn't mean that you can't have negative stuff on your credit report. Because your credit report may have a lot of stuff that's on there that's not yours. And yeah, because that stuff that's on your credit report that's not yours and hasn't been used, yeah, you have an 850 for a score. But what happens if all of a sudden, that stuff that's on your credit report starts getting used, it starts racking up balances and stuff like that. It's gonna throw your debt to income ratio out so you get access to freeannualcreditreport.com. You are allowed to, by the federal government, pull one free credit report per credit bureau per year. Please go to Experian, go to Equifax, go to TransUnion, pull a credit report, but don't do them simultaneously. Do, do them two to three years apart, two to three months apart, because that way when one updates the other one, they update the other one, you'll actually see after a year what your credit report is and if your score changes. Please do that periodically. And again, watch out for scams. Which one? Oh, free credit, free annual credit report.com. You can actually just do a Google search and just sit there and say free credit report.com. And when they say free, make sure, because there's an awful lot of other ones that look the same, but they'll charge you. So if they charge you, it's not free. It's so obviously. And that, that's a classic one for any of you parents or or our grandparents who are dealing with kids going to college, do yourself a favor, and if you want to throw something on Google, check out FAFSA.com. Now, the FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. Free, okay? If you go to FAFSA.com, they'll charge you $99 to direct you to the free credit, re to for the free credit webpage. So it's really, if you went to FAFSA.ed.gov, that's the one that goes right there. I did this on cable with Sean a little while ago. This is just to, to re-reference everything. So just because you now are in the world of technology and you get your first computer, you get your first smart device, don't think it's all free and it's all good. All right, so thank you very much. Marty, you want to come up here with a, with a pot of gold? And we'll have our chief pick the winning ticket. And if it's you, chief, uh, that's a little bit of collusion. That, that won't work well. Thank you, Chief. And the winning ticket is 268-441. Come on up, young lady. How much? $55 for the lady in black. How much? 55 There you go. Now, two things. We'll trade. I'll trade you this for that. And now... You have to pick the next winning ticket. We were given two gift cards from our Harvard community representative. And this is 268-418. 268 for, come on up. <laughs> and I'll let you pick. Either one of the same ones, how's that? Now you're gonna pick the last and final. All right, and the final one is 268371. Oh my God, here comes trouble. I knew, 
Now that, Willie, now they're going to say that this has been rigged. There always seems to be a firefighter who wins this. So this, so you brought your own ticket, yeah, and you, you penciled it incorrectly. No, no, that's okay. Well, thank you all. Um, sincerely, thank you for your attendance. And our gentleman, the, the longest traveled gentleman here from Sturbridge is here again. He made it. We're, we're really worrying about your mental health. You may want to talk to Lauren about this before you do this, but, but sincerely, I'm glad to see all of you being happy and healthy. Uh, Buzz? Oh, yes, the, the two gentlemen, please stand up. These two gentlemen uh, are my interns from St. John's Prep. I figured I'd give them a taste of uh, what municipal government is and how great all of our municipal retirees look after they've been all, you know, they're all 29 holding and they've been out for at least one day. So, thank you, gentlemen. And uh, last but not least, our scholarship committee, we have awarded two scholarships. One is to Jessica DeJoy, and the other one is to Jordan Kabishli. So just to let you know, we have actually followed through and given out two scholarships, and they were from Classical High, correct? They were both from Classical High. So that's kudos to all of you because of our dues, et cetera, and your membership and your support, we were able to grant these two scholarships. So I want to wish you a happy, healthy, very wonderful summer, and I look forward to seeing you all in September.